Sokai is a game that covers the conflicts that unfold on Baltarus as the factions of humanity fight for valuable resources. However, also on this planet weighs some native creatures. These native aliens are what I'll be covering in today's video as I review all of the alien types that are currently in the game, how they seem to be connected, and what roles they all seem to operate under. So with no more delay, let's get right into this. So first up, we have the simplest unit in the alien arsenal, the gatherer of the pack, the shrimp. These tiny gatherer units are the foundation of growth for the hive. It is their gathering of biomass that allows a hive to grow and produce more units. They're small and as their name suggests, have a very shrimp-like isopod appearance. They have no offensive capabilities and have low HP, making them easy prey for human soldiers, most likely meaning they need some sort of defenses to protect them from enemy scouts. From here we can go one step higher, the classic crab. These units are the lowest ranked in the game, acting as a simple little regular unit that are lightly armored and can do small amounts of damage. They attack using their frontal claws and also can use these claws to burrow down into the ground. In this burrowed state, they cannot be attacked by enemy gunfire, and can also use this state to hide and then jump out of the ground and surprise ambush enemy units. However, against standard scouts in frontal combat, they will find themselves generally outranged and outdamaged unless they use clever tactics to bridge the gap, in which, in close range, they can completely demolish a scout. Higher up from these crabs are their armored cousins. These armored crabs sport more shelling that allows them to absorb more damage and strike back harder against enemy units. They too can burrow and use their claws to attack enemies that are in range, with the benefit of that aforementioned shelling letting them tank more damage, and thus more likely to bridge the gap between them and enemies. Away from the standard units, we can turn to some of the more advanced brothers that can actually fight the intruding humans with some specialized evolutions built to counter the advantages the humans have. Continuing with the units that seem to build off the crab subtype, we have the scorpion. This unit sports the typical six legs of the crab, as well as the armor and frontal crawls of the crab. They also have a similar eye structure to the crabs, signifying that overall they have a closer archetype connection to the crabs than other units. The scorpions, however, also sport a long tail, that on the end of which sports a sack that allows it to fire projectiles as an offensive countermeasure against enemies. From here we can go to another, more range type unit that seems to be also crab in origin, this being the behemoth. These large offensive units hold many similarities to the standard crab, however they do seem quite unique compared to the scorpion. Instead of having a mostly crab build, they instead have a build that seems geared around their primary offensive, that being their spore like projectiles they send out. These projectiles can fire quickly and have large reserves that are stored on the underbelly of the tail. However, generally the physiology of this creature is, as I said, crab in origin. So it's kind of like an offshoot from the crab that isn't from the scorpion. Which makes sense considering the lore of these creatures. From the crab types though, we can move to the more shrimp based units. The units that seem to have more in common with those gatherers. And that these types of units are shrimply interesting, being more longer and having more legs, and more so resembling a centipede or, as aforementioned, a shrimp. So we start out with the Impaler. These very centipede-like units sport a main frontal primary claws and a long tail that terminates in a pincer akin to a centipede. They also have longer range attacks that allow them to attack from range, but also have low armor and HP, allowing them to be countered by concentrated human fire. 
To finish out with the shrimps, we also got a kinda strange unit, that being the hunter unit. Personally, I was hard pressed to figure out if they held greater genetic connection to the shrimps or the crabs. But again, considering they all come from the same species anyways, it really doesn't matter. The hunters are a decent bit larger, sport two long flails which they use to attack, and are able to move quite quickly on their four legs. They operate as a kind of blitz unit for the nest, being able to handle decent amounts of enemy cav and really ruin an enemy offensive of infantry by just pushing in, dealing massive amounts of damage as a real shock unit. To finish out everything though, the aliens really adopted that old mentality of go big or go home. The Goliath is a tank unit in every sense of the word, and that may be the planet's response to that heavier cav that humanity has deployed. Featuring a massive build and heavy armor, it can do a lot of damage, with either its roll or frontal claw attack, allowing it to even the odds out with even humanity's greatest inventions, such as plasma and rail weaponry. However, it faces the key downside of low speed, which prevents it from being able to use the agility that the rest of the horde employs to outmaneuver humanity. Carefully pushing this unit into a key position may let it decimate an enemy calf push, but failure to understand its speed will honestly be its undoing. Back to the focus of this video and not really the tactics behind these units. I believe the Goliath is the final form of a crab, like an alpha crab. I personally don't think it's a queen, as it lacks the whole, you know, spawning that I think a queen would have. If anything, the behemoth is, in my eyes, closer to a queen. But it very easily could be one, seeing as we don't really understand the physiology of this species. But that's it for today, though. That's is a general overview of all the strange aliens on Balthorus, the traits, and how I think they hold genetic connections to each other, and why they have their evolutionary differences that they do. If you enjoy stuff like this, I do intend over the next couple of weeks to begin looking deeper into Silica's lore, trying to see if we can put connections together where things aren't directly told to us. Again, Silica is still in early access, so can't make a lot of conclusions until the game is really in the finished state that Drum has in mind. Um, but if you'd like to talk to others about Silica, I do have a Discord linked in my description where I will be talking about my own findings in Silica and hopefully some of y'all decide to pop in and play some rounds with me and discuss what we're all finding about this great new game. Um, if you do not have Silica or you're interested in the title, it's available on Steam for early access. It is Bohemia Interactive's newest incubator project. But until we get more info or I have more to share with you, this has been Christopher Beast. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all, well, next time.